the printmaking process I use is mainly woodcuts, what, what would traditionally be called woodcuts, but really I'm transferring images from whole planks and whole trees or across the planks from a whole tree. I don't use woodcuts in the traditional way and now I don't do a lot of cutting, it's more to do with the tree and the silhouette of the plank and so it's, it's not really like a woodcut but um, the technique's very similar. I burnish the back, I don't use a press and I use any bit of wood however rotten, distorted. When you're working it's like being in a trance. You have to, you're, you're like checking and double checking all the time and you have to go, o you have to go over the top. It's only, I only know that it's finished when I can't do it any longer. I'm just trying to get it even. When you lose the, the three-dimensional quality of it and you change it from brown to blue, you're taking it into, I don't know what you call it, a, a, another space. Uh, it's no longer earthbound. It's more, river, uh, it's more water and airbound. Blues are naturally um, transparent colour. Transparent colour is very important and the understanding of transparent colour, that's why a lot of people are using a screen to get a better image. Your opaque colour is somehow deadening, it's a contrivance to get brightness. Paper and transparency is uh, really important. Paper as a structure is very important. I suppose because of our climate and everything, uh, everything's so solid, so stone-like, so um, heavy. You know, if there's a lack of lightness and, and in the structure and transparency, I feel there's a need for it, then I will produce it. I don't like my mind to reduce scale onto something small. I like my mind to think outwards. It's, it's also about the image bouncing out into space. It's like not narrowing the image, changing the scale, narrowing your world down to a small little image in a book that you can close down onto. I want people to share my work. I don't, I don't like it to be small so people can put it in their own pockets. I'd rather it was big so people had to put it on a wall that they had to share. I don't just go <laughs> like a machine. I'm all the time judging where the ink's picking up and how much it's picking up. I think people have got confused about what people actually are doing by putting stuff under pressure and what people are doing by some photographic mechanical process. People can't see the difference and it's hard to see often and so it makes people mistrustful. Copies of paintings I think stink. I've got a Starling and, a, and a, I think it's a Swift. You hardly ever see them on the ground actually. I try to project fish, birds and animals into a visual future, not to romanticise or be nostalgic about it. These are my subjects and they're really important to me. I prefer to transfer an image from an object than to think about drawing it where it's got to go all the way through my head and I have to make different sort of decisions that are not directly enough. I'll do another one. If it's got to go through my head, then I do a woodcut. But if it's going to come from the actual objects, I do it like this. The, the way I print frees me from all sorts of contrivances, you know, sort of artistic contrivances. Everything I do is transferring images from something or other. And it's just called printmaking, but it's, uh, it's really about transferring images. I think that's enough. I guess that's the thing after I've done a few, I start to see what I'm trying to do a bit better. Still only just is good enough for Swift. And you think how fantastic. I keep thinking I might do better in my head, but I don't know. I'll have to do a woodcut. <laughs>